fiscal responsibility, a constitutionally limited government. You know, when I began to Washington and I began to look, I said, I, I took these as, as my core values, if you would. I took them seriously when I crafted not only the legislative agenda that I wanted to work on, but also when it came down to working on uh, other pieces of legislation and signing on to other people's legislation and also working with our uh, conservative members, our Republican Party, and, and those across the aisle who would join us. Because here's where I believe we uh, miss it, and my colleague from Missouri you know, brought this out. You know, it's easy uh, for many times that we can, you know, always, uh, you know, say uh, what we do. We can always say this is what we do, and, and there's many times that we will um, be able to say this is how we do it. However, I believe that we, and, and especially from my party, and as a conservative who stands in this well and speaks tonight, is, is we've got to get better at not only saying this is what we're doing, this is how we're doing it, but we've got to reconnect, I believe, with the American people in this body and in this city with why we do what we do. And, and that is going to matter when we look at people looking it up here and they look on the TV or they read their newspapers and they see the problems that they, we've talked about earlier. They see the disconnect with a top-down uh, style that is, is, is really just growing in our country, whether it be on the river systems or it be in our farms or it be in our factories or it be in our workplaces. What we've really got to understand is, is we've got to now say this is these beliefs that I just laid out, individual freedom, fiscal responsibility, constitutionally limited government. And what I want to do is begin a conversation that may occur over many weeks is saying this is why I believe this is what is good for America. This is why I believe, as I did this afternoon, that if it was good enough for businesses, that it's good enough for individuals. And we've got to be fair with the American people. They understand when we're not being fair. And they look at us and they, they believe things that are said and they say we don't trust our government anymore. We don't trust them not to uh, listen into our phone conversation or tap into our Internet uh, email. They don't trust us anymore to believe us when we say that we have their best interests at heart because, frankly, over the past number of years in this city, we have failed them. And we, I believe, from a conservative perspective, have to get back to saying why it matters once again to have a balanced budget. Now, I know that sounds like just comic relief up here in this city. But for me and in my family, and I always take it back to, to my home and my wife, and when we sit down and we look at our budget and we say, this is how much we have coming in, believe me, I am blessed. I, I've said before that I believe that if I could just get my wife, if she were to control the budget, we'd be balanced in a, in a very short time and have, a, and have a surplus. Because we've had to do it many times when we have cut back and we have said, this is what matters to us. It's called priorities, and it's called stewardship. And it goes back to individual freedom. It goes back to fiscal responsibility. It goes back to constitutionally limited government. And I believe that conservative values and conservative principles and conservative ideas that we are trying to promote right now, from my perspective, in my district and my service here in Washington, is what will matter to this country and restores the shining light that I believe America is. When we understand that, then Joe and Sally whether in South Florida or in Washington State or in Alaska or in Northeast Georgia or in the beautiful scenery of Missouri, they all understand at the end of the day they have paychecks, they have school bills, they have reports, they have family, they have responsibilities, and they want to be a part, but they have to look at it from a perspective of what do I have and how can I do it. It goes back to that common theme of stewardship. Stewardship. And understanding we've been given a set amount of resources in a set amount of time and the question is what do we do with it i believe that is what will change and put us back on a course of being able to work together and moving forward with ideas that matter and for people that now say we cannot continue the path we're on when they have such a low opinion of this body when they look at their country and they say it's on a wrong direction well i believe it's on a wrong direction because we've left the fundamental moorings of our founding fathers who said that we should be in promoting individual freedom fiscal responsibility and constitutionally limited government in january i joined my colleagues in reading on the united states constitution right here on this house floor in fact i came right here to this uh... podium is my collection comes about after six months, a lot of things going on, but it was right here where we began with reading the Constitution again at the start of this Congress. 
And I believe that each public servant should constantly refer to this vital document when performing his or her duties. And also the things that have come through our courts and others that have formed the foundation of our constitutional framework. I'm pleased today, I'm pleased that this body began its session by reminding ourselves of the responsibilities we have to the American people, as well as the liberties we are sworn to protect. I am a chaplain in the United States Air Force Reserve. And recently I have been monitoring very carefully the developments uh, that has surrounded our service members' rights of free speech and freedom of religious exercise and making sure that they are protected. Our men and women in uniform bled and bleed daily and die for these precious liberties. I had the opportunity to serve in Iraq in 2008. And I had the ability, and I was a nighttime flight line chaplain, and I would go around at night, and it was great because I was the only chaplain on duty, so I would spend time with our flying squadrons and spend time with maintenance operators and our food service folks and our security forces and, and would get to know them on a, a very real and personable basis. And I did so in, in a role which did not matter if they had faith or no faith. It was my job to protect their right to have a faith and to practice it or to not have a faith and choose not to practice any kind of faith. But it was protected under what chaplains do. And lately, efforts through the DOD and outside organizations and this administration seems to want to take that privilege and that right that we have in our Constitution and degenerate that right and take it away. I'm very troubled by efforts that would curb chaplains' ability to perform their duties and prevent service members from honestly sharing their faith or a scripture with other service members. Now, before anyone jumps up and says, proselytizing, we don't need that in the military or workplaces, there are already rules for that. There are already things that would keep out of bounds or inappropriate workings of, our, of someone sharing or, or putting someone in a position of uncomfortability with their, with their faith. But when it comes to chaplains, our very experience is to share from what we believe and what we have in our heart. And for me, being a Southern Baptist chaplain, it comes from a faith that I believe is deeply welled within me. And to say that that, that cannot be a part of who I am is something that is simply wrong. And now we have ideas of, of, of bringing into the chaplain corps among different services an atheist chaplain. Now, at first, when I first heard this, I said, this must be a joke. You're kidding me. An atheist chaplain? Now, if you choose to not believe in God, that is your right. You're in America, and that is your belief. And that is something that you can have. You can be agnostic, believe there's a God but not personal. Or you can have a personal faith or of another variety. Or you can work, uh, be Muslim or Hindu or Buddhist or whatever you want to do and whatever you want to believe. But when we get into this area of them bringing in and the standards that we have as chaplains, we have to have a master's degree. We have to be endorsed by our, our religious affiliation, endorser, to be a part of the chaplain corps. We serve sort of two hats. We serve the military by maintaining our military bearing and our, our physical fitness and our military qualifications, while at the same time, I also have to maintain my qualifications as a Southern Baptist ordained minister. And in doing so, I can't have one without the other. It goes back to a theme that I've talked about tonight of responsibility. I believe responsibility, no matter the household, no matter the political persuasion, people get responsibility. And they get stewardship. But as chaplains, we have to measure both sides. And so when it becomes a, a, a game, in my mind, to take away or to denigrate what the chaplain's role is, to protect the religious freedom and expression of all service members, whether they have faith or not, then we're missing it. And frankly, Main Street America don't get it. They don't understand it in their, in their churches, in their synagogues, in their mosques. They don't get it. When Washington, D.C., when we have job issues in our country, when we have financial issues in our country, and we are finding out from our agencies and Department of Defense and an administration that is pushing an agenda to, very, to go at the very heart of our constitutional freedom, they don't get it. And frankly, I don't either. I'm going to be watching this over the next few weeks and few months, and I will continue to speak out. There are many ways for us to be there. But I believe as a chaplain, I have stood beside the bed of those who believed as I and those who never had a faith and never wanted a faith. 
but they wanted to talk to someone who knew that they had 